only the second woman after Queen Elizabeth II to address both houses of parliament, Aung San Suu Kyi uses the rare honor to call on the British people to help bring democracy to Myanmar. So I'm here in part to ask for practical help, help as a friend and an equal, in support of the reforms which can bring better lives, greater opportunities to the people of Burma. The Nobel laureate, who refers to Myanmar as Burma, spent 15 years under house arrest before she was released two years ago. Suu Kyi said despite recent political reforms in her country, more needs to be done. Earlier in the day, British Prime Minister David Cameron offered his support and said Myanmar's president, Uthain Sain, would travel to London for talks on reform. Britain will remain staunch in its support, just as we have been in the long period of darkness through which you and your people have lived through. Su Kyi, who was sworn into Myanmar's parliament last month, said she supported the president's visit. During her day in London, the 67-year-old also met with Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall as part of her 17-day European tour. Sarah Irwin, Reuters. Myanmar's pro-democracy leader Aung San Suu Kyi continued her world tour with a stop at Oxford, her alma mater. She was greeted by supporters who gave her flowers and sang happy birthday to her. Suu Kyi was a student there in the late 70s before returning to Myanmar to take up the pro-democracy struggle. Her husband and two sons remained in England while she was under house arrest for the next 15 years. During an interview with ITN, Suu Kyi said that while she doesn't regret her decisions, she does miss the time she was away from her children. It was a choice I made. It was a sacrifice for my husband and sons, especially for my sons, because my husband, after all, was adult, but the children were young. And it must have mattered to them not to have both parents near them. And uh, I don't uh, feel good about it, but on the other hand, I think that in the end, one decides what one's priorities are and one lives with one's decisions. Later Wednesday, Suu Kyi will receive an honorary doctorate from the university. Julie Noche, Reuters. This is signal message. Speed. This present constitution does not harmonize with our aspirations, that is to say, we who are not, uh, we are ethnic Burmese, but who wish for a democratic constitution, nor does it harmonize with the aspirations of the other ethnic nationalities who are minority in the sense that they're fewer, fewer of each, other, each of the uh, other nationalities than are of the Burmese ethnic nationality. Uh, unless we amend the constitution, to harmonize with the aspirations of all, all of the people in our country, we will not, never be able to bring about the kind of unity and peace that we all desire. So it all comes down to rule of law. The fighting is not just taking place on one side. I understand that Burmese military forces have gone into territory which previously was agreed to be uh, under the supervision of the KIO. But when we asked what the, uh, what the, how, how the matters stood, when we asked, uh, for example, the UN uh, High Commission for Human Rights, when we asked the United Nations agencies, they said they cannot say for sure because they have not been allowed to go in as independent observers. So resolving conflict is not about condemnation. It is about finding out the roots, the causes of that conflict and finding out how it can be resolved in the best way possible. This journey didn't start on the 13th when I came to Europe, but on the 29th of last month, month when I went to Thailand. And I was surprised and very touched 
by the warmth with which the Thais welcomed me as though I were one of them. And this I have found in Switzerland, uh, in Norway, yesterday evening in Ireland for a brief six hours or so, and now here in England. So I think it's all of you and people like you who have given me the strength to continue. And I suppose I do have a stubborn streak in me. <laughs> <laughs>